Let's talk to Paul Charles, the CEO of PC Agency and a former communications director for uh, Fer uh, Virgin Atlantic and Eurostar. Paul, so Heathrow reporting record passenger numbers, EasyJet predicted to do very well. Why is air travel going to be so big this year? These are certainly strong numbers from both Heathrow and EasyJet, as you say, and it is simply that demand is very strong. Consumers want to get away. They want to travel when they want to travel. They want to have new experiences, and they're also fleeing some pretty unpredictable weather, especially in the UK's case, with a lot of uh, wet weather recently. But when you put all those things together, even though prices are relatively high for seats, people still want to get away and enjoy time off. I mean, you talk about the weather, which has been shocking. Um, some also talk about this being a, a post-COVID story. Is this simply about us saying, look, this is no longer a luxury, a holiday is a necessity? We seem to be saying, in fact, more than one holiday is a necessity. The average uh, number of holidays taken is two and a half a year overseas beyond uh, those trips taken domestically, whether in the UK or domestically elsewhere in Europe. Yes, things have changed since COVID. Psychologically, people don't want to be tied down, locked down anymore. They want to be away and traveling. They believe they can work remotely in uh, overseas climes and uh, in other countries. So gone are the old rules. No longer are they saying they always have to travel for a week during the summer. Uh, traveling is becoming year-round, peak periods are happening in traditional non-peak periods of the past, and the airlines, as well as the airports like Heathrow, are benefiting from that. Well, what about the cost of living crisis? I mean, is this uh, really sustainable? It's a really good question. From an airline's point of view, there hasn't really been a cost of living crisis, bizarrely, compared with other sectors like retail, which have suffered. The airlines have done very well, increasing prices by, on average, 10 to 15 percent, which is extraordinary in an inflation period, which has been around 10 percent. So cost of living doesn't seem to have hit people when it comes to flying. They're prioritizing their disposable income and putting it into flying somewhere preferably warm. In terms of whether it's sustainable, I think it is. I think things have changed since COVID. Our mentality has changed. We want to be on the move. We don't want to be stuck in the same place all the time. We want to get out and see close family and friends. And the airlines are obviously still making it very attractive to fly, dipping prices when they need to, but ensuring they're still getting bumper profits. Uh, would you think we'll see prices come down flying uh, like we did with those sky high energy prices? No, totally different story here. I think prices are going to continue to rise. They are definitely being reduced at the moment. You're seeing increases by airlines of around 3 to 5% a year on airfares compared with the, the 10 to 15% I was referencing. But those prices are still going up, even in an inflation period of roughly 2 to 3%. So prices are still rising a little bit. And I don't see that changing. I think we've become used to paying whatever it takes to get on a plane, especially at a time when uh, it's difficult for the airlines to grow their capacity due to uh, a dearth in the number of planes being delivered. So, no, I think these prices will continue to rise uh, and demand will continue to stay strong. Paul, good to see you. Thank you for that. Uh, Paul Charles, the CEO of PC Agency.